Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Ja. We woke up with Andy Griffith today. I mean, we woke up in Mount Airy, the home of Andy Griffith. That's not the topic of our vlog today, but we just, you know, after we left you in our last vlog, we ended in, I think, like the state line of Georgia there. We drove through South Carolina all the way up to here. And the reason I want to start here is because the one thing we didn't do when we were here before was get a snappy lunch. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now there's a lot to see here in town, but we've seen most of it already. So if you wanna see what we've seen before, just type in Andy Griffith on my channel. We're actually at the, uh, the museum here where they have this great statue to Andy and Opie. All right, Ja, let's get a snappy lunch and then we're headed off to another adventure. Right up here on the main street here. Perfect timing. Looks like Andy and Barney are here. So here they are, right in the windshield. Look who's pulling up. We get to walk by Floyd's Barber Shop on the way because it's right next door. Here's part of the snappy lunch. There's Floyd's. They do actually do haircuts here, certain days of the week. We'll come back for that someday. I do want to get my hair cut there someday. Now, let's get the snappy lunch. It's a famous pork chop sandwich. Oh wow, this is great. All kinds of signed pictures for people. And of course, Andy. I'm down with the seats down here, they have Otis. <laughs> Mustard, chili, slaw, onions, tomato. I got my no tomato. I'm lucky. I was told last time they usually have a line out the door during the afternoon. Pretty cool to eat in a place that Andy Griffith used to eat in that he based one of the restaurants on the show from. So here's the famous pork chop sandwich. I'm about to view it with you for the first time. Ooh, looks pretty good. I like that the pork chops kind of flattened out. I wasn't sure what to expect. That looks pretty good. All right, let's give it a try. That's really good. I didn't know if I'd like it because of the chili, but I love it actually. Oh yeah, better with every bite. Have to get one of these to go. They also have a stock car wall of fame here. But we're out of here. We're actually gonna be heading off to Oak Hill, West Virginia. Thanks for guarding the car, buddy. So we have about a uh, little over two hours for our next destination. Very historic place. Very sad for me, too. We made it to Virginia! For now, anyway. There's an old Mountain Dew sign right there. So where we're heading out to is where Hank Williams' last ride ended. Hank was actually, you know, he, he lived an entire life with spina bifida, which was just absolutely painful for his back, and it caused him to do, you know, to drink and do different things to alleviate the pain. And it's always kind of like assumed that his last ride was like, you know, by people that don't know any better that it was just an overdose or something like that. And it, Really, it, you know, it came down to Hank was out trying to kind of revive his career. He was 29 years old and had a tumultuous marriage and he was out doing some New Year's shows and he ended up basically being found dead in the back of his car on New Year's Day. I say that because I don't want people to think that Hank was just some, you know, drinking drug abused person he wasn't this was a guy who lived in a lot of pain his life even on his last ride when he was leaving his hotel the doctor came and shot him up with two shots of b12 that had morphine in it and other than his driver said they bought a six pack of beer in birmingham alabama and when hank passed there were still a couple of 
cans in the back. That was the extent of it. Hello, West Virginia. You can see that small green sign there it says the Hank Williams Senior Memorial Road. And there we're going to Oak Hill. Right here in the downtown area where the historic Lewis house is and also the amphitheater, they have a placard here that says Hank Williams' Last Ride. The legendary Hank Williams recorded 30 hit singles including seven number one hits on the Billboard Top 10 Country Western charts in six years. However, his erratic behavior caused by a mixture of alcohol and narcotics, well, we already talked about that, caused WSM's Grand Ole Opry to fire him in August of 1952. In an effort to revive his stalled career, he left his mother's boarding house in Montgomery, Alabama on December 30th for four holiday concerts. Charles Carr, the 18-year-old son of a taxi service owner, drove the singer's 1952 Cadillac convertible. After an overnight stop at the Redmont Hotel in Birmingham and some rest and medical attention at the Andrew Johnson Hotel in Knoxville, they encountered weather delays in Tennessee. Dense fog thwarted an attempt to travel by airplane. The singer was forced to skip a pair of New Year's Eve concerts in Charleston, West Virginia, and they raced towards Ohio for two New Year's Day concerts in Canton, Ohio. In the pre-dawn hours of January 1st, 1953, on a road south of Beckley, the teenage driver found the singer unresponsive stretched out on the back seat of the Cadillac. Carr rushed to Oak Hill Hospital. The 29-year-old singer who penned such hits as Hey Good Lookin' and I Saw the Light was pronounced dead of heart failure at 7 a.m. The staff of Tyree Funeral Home embalmed and dressed the body and drove the singer's body in a hearse to Montgomery for services. Estimated 2,000 mourners overflowed and surrounded the city's auditorium on a snowy Sunday, January 4th. Within a year, publishers released four more songs that earned the hit status, including the classic Kalijah and Your Cheatin' Heart. The route of Knoxville to Blaine to Bristol to Bluefield to Princeton to Mount Hope to Oak Hill remains a sacred pilgrimage for many fans of the singer-songwriter. Now, yes, as you saw on that sign, yeah, Hank did get fired from the Opry for those things. And then during those times, it was a tumultuous time. He did have the back pain, but he also had kind of a tumultuous marriage as well that caused him to drink. And this trip was just not one of those. That's not, not what caused this. But, you know, I found an interview with Charles Carr and it was really interesting. He said, you know, Hank was in a great mood. He said, you know, even though you know, the story was that they gave Hank the injections that had morphine in it, he said, and they did have to bring D Hank down to the car in a wheelchair. Hank could get up out of the wheelchair and walk to the car and get in the car and everything. And he said, the whole drive, they were talking and laughing and yucking it up and talking about music. He said, just like young guys would. He said, in fact, I remember him asking me what I thought of his hit song at the time that had just come out, Jambalaya, and I told him I didn't like it. I, none of it made sense, I didn't get it. And, uh, and he said, you don't make any sense. So he said, we had been having a, a good time along the way. And then he said, once we, we had got on the road for a while, he said basically what happened was they were at the, uh, the hotel in Knoxville and they got a call saying, get on the road now because the weather's getting worse. And if Hank doesn't make it to his show on time on New Year's Day, then there's a financial penalty. So that's what they were racing there for. And they couldn't stop because, uh, you know, they had a time restraint. And he actually said, the driver said, along the way, we picked up a secondary driver that took over some of the driving for Charles and they dropped him off in West Virginia. And Hank and, and, uh, and Charles continued driving, but they stopped, as you saw in there in Bristol, Virginia, and Hank was still alive then. Charles asked him if he wanted anything to eat and Hank said no. And he said that may not have been the last thing that Hank ever said in his life, but he said that's the last thing he heard. So once he got to roughly this area in town, he found Hank was unresponsive and then drove a little further up to a gas station. The gas station is now gone, but right across the street they have another plaque. So 
let's check that out. Let's go see where the gas station was because once he pulled in here, he asked the gas station attendant to help him and that's when he said, this guy's dead. So it was only about two blocks up. In fact, to the right is the hospital, or what it was at the time, Oak Hill Hospital at the time. And right here to the right was where the gas station would have been, this empty lot right here. So appropriate that the bells would be going off now. That would be the official last stop. And the hospital right over here. So we're at the Herbert Jones Public Library. And they have a plaque for Hank right here now. I love Hank's music beyond the hits. Just go get Luke the Drifter. Listen to his Luke the Drifter album, the album that couldn't be played on jukeboxes. It had no, no danceable songs, all heart. There it is, the Hank Williams Memorial. September 17th, 1923 to January 1st, 1953. January 1st, 1953 in Oak Hill. West Virginia Hank Williams Sr. made his last stop on his last tour. This memorial is dedicated by his fans who wish to keep his memory and music alive forever. So the driver's Charles Carr said that while they were driving, he had reached back because Hank had said how tired he was and he noticed that Hank's overcoat and blanket had fallen off him. So he was going to put it back on and felt the resistance from Hank's arm not being normal. And so that's why he ended up pulling off. But a preliminary autopsy found uh, very little trace of alcohol in his blood when he died, but found no drugs. So unfortunately they could not revive Hank Williams at this hospital and he was taken over to the funeral home that embalmed him so let's go see where that was actually not too far from here literally just a few minutes down the road from the hospital and it's still there there it is tyree funeral home actually having a funeral right now so i'm trying to be respectful but this is where they brought Hank's body to embalm him. And then as we saw on that billboard that they, this funeral home drove him home to Montgomery the next day where they would put him in a silver casket and put him on display for visitors to come pay their respects inside Hank's mother's house, which was a boarding house. That's where Hank was living at the time. And everyone said goodbye the next day and they buried him. But I figure since we're driving through Charleston, West Virginia, and that was supposed to be one of the four stops, but it got canceled, let's go see that municipal auditorium where he was supposed to perform. To get there, it's gonna take us about an hour of really small back roads. Look at that old satellite dish I just found. Oakwood store. Charleston when you see the big gold dome it's a beautiful town it's a cool mural here it is Charleston Municipal Auditorium built in 1939 art deco facility and this was supposed to be Hank's New Year's Eve show except the weather was too bad for him to fly out and make it so that's what continued that journey along in the car. The show that never was. It does look like they have a little bit of historical thing over here I'll read. I see Burt Kreischer is gonna be here soon. <laughs> the machine. Yeah, it does tell about the history of the auditorium. Oh, it says among its famous guests, it was President Harry Truman gave the give him hell 
in a campaign speech that was live national radio broadcast from here, October 1st, 1948. Well, right above us is the Welcome to Ohio sign. And that means that is also our Goodbye from Ohio sign. John, I will see you tomorrow. We hope you enjoyed our vlog today. Thank you all for watching. If you're new here, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye.